ever thought that people are turning their backs on you? That's how I feel. 20 years I have been fighting for female entrepreneurship. For 20 years I've been a woman in business. And why am I fighting? Why do I continue to fight? This is not about me. This is not about how I can benefit. Look, I'm already too old. I'm already running my company, so any changes in legislation won't affect me. This is about Europe. This is about the people in Europe. This is about innovation, jobs, businesses, SMEs, entrepreneurs, everything that Europe 2020 talks about. This is not a gender issue. This is an economic imperative, something that we must do in the European Union. Let me explain. I started in business 20 years ago. After eight years in business, I had created 35 jobs. All of the jobs were for long-term unemployed people. I had two factories, both in regeneration areas. I came out of my kitchen at home from where I started my business. I went from supplying four products to supplying 10,000 products a week. A hundred lines of products, that's innovation. This is what Europe needs. This is why entrepreneurship is so important. This is why I am fighting. Because if you take me, somebody with no qualifications, no skills, no training, a survivor of domestic violence, I was in poverty when I started my business. If I can do it, can you imagine how many other women we could empower? And those women who have already taken that risk, how many of them can we help grow their businesses? And all the women and girls coming before them, that's where I want to see the change. And how can we make those, that change happen? It's no good me standing here complaining. I'm an entrepreneur, so I want to give concrete recommendations. In 1988, in the US, there was a bill put in place that doubled the number of female entrepreneurs across 10 years. What's the result? The highest number of jobs created since the crisis have been by women-owned companies. The greatest number of SMEs created since the crisis have been by women. Women are now operating in every single sector of the economy. It's not about hairdressing, health and education anymore. It's about transport, it's about infrastructure, it's about IT and technology, science, engineering, everything we talk about in Europe. This is why we need to create more female entrepreneurs and we need to empower them. And how did the US do it? Well, by putting in place this bill, they put in four concrete recommendations. One, to put in a commissioner or a directorate for female entrepreneurship that is not based in the gender directorate, but is based in the economy directorate. Because this is an economic matter. It's not about women and gender. It's about economics. Second, they put in a directorate to look at all the policies, cross policy, all the integrated policies and how they affected women in business. Third, and the most essential point one for me, is they had data collection. The data shows where the money was going, how the impact and the monitoring was done so that it was done to the best benefit for women in the economy and best benefit for the economy. And fourth, they made sure that gender legislation was implemented. Now, I have asked Commissioner Tajani to put this in place and I was refused. They didn't want to do it. So we don't have any statistics in the European Union. We don't have any comparable data because we don't have even have a definition within each member state of what female entrepreneurship is. If we don't collect that data, we cannot show the discrimination that is happening. And that's what I want to show with concrete data, why it's more difficult to be a female entrepreneur in the European Union. Gandhi said, you must be the change you want to see. Maddie says, you must be the change you want to see. No excuses. 
and I will not take any more excuses of people giving us reasons as why they won't support female entrepreneurship. Please help me.